Joining us in studio right now, Mayor Richard Strick. Mayor, good morning to you, sir. Hey, good morning, Monty, and good morning to our listeners. Man, I tell you, you got the, the coffee with you. You're ready to go this morning. I need it to get ready for the day. Well, you had uh, last week off, and we talked with Eric Bruce. Had a wonderful time uh, chatting with him down at the Baron Beak Bakery. And, uh, of course, you had to pre-record that because the weather was really tricky. So, you, I don't know, were you caught up in any of that craziness? Yeah, I was actually scheduled to be out of town on a silent retreat and had to come back early due to the weather. And uh, got to drive through all the rain before it became snow. But, of course, then uh, once we were back here, I uh, had a great chance to uh, just work alongside of uh, the city streets and parks and a water distribution team to make sure we got streets cleared up and coordinate those efforts with our leadership and peers over at the county. Yes, and we were on the air remotely overnight, making sure we got all the different announcements and travel advisories on the air. It was uh, really crazy. I was actually broadcasting from uh, my home, and my wife is very tolerant to put up with me sitting at the edge of the bed with a microphone going, there is a travel advisory. And <laughs> one in the morning, she you want to cut that out and, and turn that off for me? And I said, no, I can't do that. But, uh, hey, we're back, and uh, things are improving. So uh, State of the City address is coming up, and we wanted to – address that a little bit this morning. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, we had our opportunity to uh, give the State of the City address uh, for the first time to City Council on Tuesday at the evening meeting, and then we'll have uh, several public meetings uh, coming up, and we'll be broadcasting that and making it available. I think you're going to be at one of those with us, right? Uh, yes, I believe that's coming up on the 16th uh, from one of the buildings here in town, and so we will actually be broadcasting that live as you uh, give that address. But uh, maybe a sneak peek at uh, some of the things that are going on for our listeners this morning. Yeah, well, one of the things I always like to do with an address like that is there's a there's a quote or a, a, a piece of poetry or a song lyric, something that sticks with me that I like to incorporate in there. And uh, towards the tail end, we get to talk a little bit about Ralph Waldo Emerson and what he thought went into making a great nation. And I think that there's a lot of those same concepts that translate to us making a great community. And the reality of it is the biggest thing is it's not about any one person, and it's about all of us doing our part. That, that, that really is true, and when you see the people that are engaging in volunteer activities, uh, we mentioned Eric Bruce, for example, with HARDA, and, and different things like that, it really, really is inspiring. Yeah, it's remarkable, and one of the things we talk about, we give a lot of statistics in the uh, State of the City Address to talk about what work was accomplished last year, and one of the big things we point to is those volunteers, and volunteers who worked with the City of Huntington were involved with over 6,000 hours of volunteer time and 70 projects, and when we translate that out to what savings uh, that does for the rest of us, it, it works out to about $185,000 a year in that case. Hey, that's nothing to sneeze at, is nope, it? Nope, it's not. <laughs> I so. Did. You know, so you really got to uh, give those volunteers accolades in so many hours of their time that they put in and don't ask for anything. And that really shows that they care about this community. It is. And, and for me, you know, as a as a transplant, as an adult to Huntington, you know, I'm Huntington by choice. And, you know, volunteering in the community is what helped me fall in love with this place and fall in love with the people that call it home. My goodness. Uh, anything that uh, you can share with uh, some of the things you, you might be talking about or give a little sneak peek, if you will? Yeah. Well, we like I said, we'll talk about the volunteers. We'll cover every department and some of the work that was accomplished, uh, paving projects and whatnot. And, you know, there's a few other things there with uh, work that we, we did with city council that often gets caught in the wash of, of daily happenings. But, again, everything we're doing is trying to run the city more effectively and efficiently. You know, the analogy I like to use is it's kind of like the operating system on your computer. If things are going well, you don't notice anything. But if something goes wrong, you notice it real quick. And so even if it's snowfall like we had this last week, our job is to get out there and get things as clear as possible, as quick as possible, so that folks can get back to work and get as close to normal life as possible. And you know what? There's it. What was amazing is is how quickly everyone stuck by the the edict that you put out of the travel advisories, and people weren't out there on the roads, and that made that a lot easier for the municipal departments to get out there and, and do their thing and try to get ahead of all this. You're exactly right, Monty. I can't underscore how important and helpful that was. Our our guys get out there with those trucks and the heavy equipment, and if there's no cars on the road. Uh, they can be much more effective in plowing the streets than if they're having to carve around folks or, or deal with somebody who's off in a ditch. And it made it easier also for uh, the emergency departments to get through if someone needed a, an ambulance or a fire department or, or things like that. Absolutely right. So you, you really got to give it up for the people that are doing everything that they do out there to uh, keep ahead of things. Uh, what else is going on this morning? 
Yeah. So as we we look at the city of a whole as a whole, of course, you know we're still uh, working to get that snow removed. But there's there's a lot of uh, good things happening across the city, not just with the administration, but in factories across this town. And uh, just got to hear a great story the other day uh, from EcoLab from about a about a year ago. If folks remember the. Uh, the uh, USS Nimitz was in, in port and waiting on supplies, and uh, there was a rush delivery from Ecolab uh, to make sure that that, uh, that U.S. Navy ship was outfitted with the, uh, the best soap that money can buy, and that's manufactured right here in Huntington. And, uh, you know, there's a thousand stories like that every day of the way that Huntington impacts the world around it. Well, and, and this COVID has definitely been a game changer, but we're now seeing in a positive step so many employment opportunities. You're seeing uh, help wanted ads and, and signs, various postings around the community. So for those that have been without a job for a while, now the good thing is that that's its own brand of economic stimulus, if you will. Oh, absolutely. There's there are a lot of jobs that are available for folks, and and that's you know as an employer, we're we're all challenged by that as well because they're, we're competing for the workforce, and that means it's good news for the workforce. Uh, they're able to. Uh, to work for better wages so they can better take care of their families. And, you know, that's something else when it comes to the, the road closures and that, that balance of opening things up. You know, I think that the, uh, uh, you know, when we, when we went ahead of the county a little bit in our, our warning, uh, a lot of folks took that as a sign that either we didn't care or the county was being too cautious. And the reality is the equation's different when you're out in rural countryside versus when you're in a built city. Uh, we're able to we don't have to deal with the drifting like they do in the county and we don't cover as many roads as they do and so it's important for folks to keep in mind that you know we're in constant communication and coordination around that because like i said we want to get folks back to the workplace and back to their daily lives as soon as it's safe to do so because ultimately if they're not able to work then they're not going to get a paycheck and you bring up a good point because sometimes people will hear about a school delay or a school cancellation. They say, well, wait, everything seems fine. But there is that, that situation out in the county where there may be more black ice or, as you mentioned, drifting and some of those open county roads. And that can be uh, very difficult. So I think erring on the side of caution for the safety of our children is, is something fantastic that we Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Yep. So... Uh, so a uh, State of the City address uh, coming up next week on the 16th. We'll definitely be looking forward to uh, uh, talking with you about that. Anything else you want to cover here on the morning show this morning? No, I think the biggest thing is just to, to remind everybody again that uh, what makes Huntington great is the folks that call it home. And we've all got a part to play in that. And so as you go about your day-to-day, uh, think about what it looks like to just embrace today with enthusiasm unknown to mankind and uh, a kindness unknown to man and just uh, continue to look out for your neighbors and continue to do a great job. That's Love right. being part of this town. Love it. That sense of uh, ecclesia that's so, so important. Mayor Richard Strick, thank you for coming and spending a little time with us here on The Morning Show. Thanks, Monty. Stay safe, everyone.